Hey, Kelly. Hello. How are you, Jamie? I'm great. You know, bracing myself for another winter storm, but it's Minnesota. I'm so excited. <laughs> Happy International Women's Day to you. Hey, you too. I saw that all over my feed, so that's, that's a fun one. Yeah. You're going to a, an event tonight? I am. Um, it's at three o'clock. It goes from three to six. I forget what it's called, but it has to do with International Women's mm -hmm. Day. Um, and it's put on by Wired and Ready, Set, Pivot. And it's at Mosaic. Um, nice. so hopefully, I don't know if, if anybody on right now is going, but I hope to see a lot of people there. Oh, I'm jealous. I bet that'll be fun. It will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, say hi if you're popping in. Say hi to us in the chat. We'd love to see you, see where you're from. Give a shout. Um, but yeah, here to talk about leadership, which will be fun. We'll give people a few more minutes to pop in and then mm -hmm. we'll kick things off. Any fun weekend plans, Kelly? Well, as you know, I just moved to Woodbury from La Crosse, yeah. so I will be unpacking my house. I have boxes everywhere, um, but it's actually at the fun part. The moving truck and all that stuff was not fun, but now uh, you get a set home. Home. You're making it a home, you know? Yeah, I love that. Oh, Sarah Abley, I'm hoping I'm, I'm pronouncing that right. She said she'll see you at three. Oh, very cool. Aww. I will see you there, Sarah. Hi, Allison, Connor, Sarah. Happy to yeah. see you. All right, well, we could probably start with intros. Um, my name is Jamie Duong. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at Celerity. I uh, just celebrated my one year anniversary a few weeks ago. Time flies, it's crazy. It does. <laughs> um, but yeah, I ha have been working in the marketing space for about uh, 12 years and um, hopped around a few industries, healthcare, um, marketing, recruiting, um, but have loved being with Celerity and loved the team and really excited to be here with Kelly. I'm happy that you're here with me as well. <laughs> uh, so I'm Kelly Gunderson. I'm the Client Experience Director with Celerity, and I have been here almost 10 years, which is crazy to say. Started as a recruiter, um, but worked my way into more of the sales side of things, um, business development. And I have worked in a few different industries as well, but I think the longest has been recruiting. I'm just really passionate about it. Um, and I'm excited to be here and talk about our paths to leadership and just how we've gotten to where we are, um, you know, our goals for the future, but then also um, just some other tips and tricks and things that we've learned along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where we're going to start. I'm going to talk about my path um, and how I got to where I am. So I have always been um, more of like an individual sales contributor, like my entire life. My dad was a sales guy. My mom was in marketing. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to be in sales. I wanted to make a lot of money. Um, that was my whole thing. Yeah. So I did that. I went into sales. I actually worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car for some time. I don't know if everybody knows about Enterprise, but they have a pretty great training program. Um, and it's pretty hardcore. And we worked mm -hmm. crazy hours. Uh, didn't make a lot of money, but I learned a lot and learned how to, to deal with and talk to people and and know what their needs were. And and that's just like that was like the pivotal moment of like, OK, I really love sales. I love working with people, the customer service piece, the client service piece. Uh, so I just did my best and I came in at number one um, with my sales metrics constantly. And uh -huh. people kept like coming to me with questions and asking how I did it. And it was a great feeling, but I wasn't very passionate about rental cars or, or automotive in general. It just wasn't my jam. Um, so I, I did become a manager uh, in that industry, but I realized very quickly that I just wasn't I wasn't in it because of because of the passion piece. Um, so then, you know, I, I went off and did some um, admissions, like uh, higher education admissions, uh, yeah. program counseling. Uh, so it was really just like recruiting, but on the education side. And again, uh, I worked my way into being number one and, and people looking up to me and asking me how I got there. And I really loved that piece and, and knowing that others looked up to me and that I could teach them 
that the, what I've done and how I've done it. So that was really a, a turning point for me because I did like higher education. I liked the the aspect of getting people to to go into that and move into that education and, and really have that fire under them to to be better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the leading and mentoring kind of came naturally, but I was still very hesitant on managing or or being a leader again because I didn't like it at enterprise. So I uh, got into recruiting and I got the job at Celerity and mm -hmm. I was also an individual contributor for quite some time, um, did really well. And then I was really passionate about finding people jobs and I became that subject matter expert and everybody kept coming to me, asking me questions. And I was like, okay, maybe I could lead and mentor and manage. Yeah. And so I jumped into it and I love it. And I love seeing others succeed that I help, um, whether it's directly mm -hmm. or indirectly. And that's kind of where I am. Um, yeah. Well, it's so interesting to hear other people's paths to leadership. Cause I used to think that there was just one, there was, you right. know, you climb the ladder slowly in your, in your company and, and then, and that's the inevitable end point. And honestly, for me, I, I never pictured myself in leadership um, early in my career. I, I loved being an individual contributor. I really liked um, the, you know, kind of that, the, the boundaries I felt like it gave me. I also really had um, specific examples, like leaders in my life who I didn't relate to at all. You know, they were really, really loud. They were really <laughs> confident and, and brash and I didn't identify with them at all. So I just picked, I just figured, you know, that's what a leader is and I'm not that. So I'm not, you know, destined to be a leader. And right. so I was pretty happy doing what I was doing and, um, and kind of then similar to you, I just slowly like started taking on kind of the quote unquote leadership roles. Like I, I started being the person that everyone would come to and ask questions. I started um, onboarding new team members. I started um, raising my hand a lot more and offering to, you know, do, you know, team plans, you know, and, and um, owning projects and deliverables and things like that. And so um, before long, I, I, looked around and I thought, man, I'm doing the job that other leaders um, in my company are doing. Maybe that's something that I should pursue. And so I started the conversation at that point and um, haven't really looked back. And uh, then, you know, and then, and then a few roles later, found myself here at Slarity managing a fabulous team. Um, and I, like you, really love watching my team members succeed. I think that's such a a fun mm -hmm. and um, rewarding part of my day. Um, it's somehow, it's kind of relates to being a mom, which I know you can relate to Kelly, like watching somebody succeed is somehow more rewarding than you succeeding on your own, which is crazy to me. I don't think I would have thought that when I was, you know, 22, 25. Yeah, it definitely was not that way for a really long time. It's still, yeah. it's still I am a very competitive person and I still like uh, yeah. <laughs> those accolades and, and rewards and being number one, but, you know, seeing others um, be number one and, and because of the things that you've helped yeah. them and taught them, that is, that is really rewarding. And yes, as a mom, like seeing my son, um, Elliot, grow and, and learn and do the things that I do in a, in a respectful and nice way um, mm -hmm. is pretty awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, have you had examples in your career of, you know, leaders you've looked up to or maybe leaders that you have not looked up to? Yeah, I've had both. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, being in being in recruiting um, in the industry that we're in, so I, I, I've talked to candidates, I've talked to clients um, and I see both sides. I see, I see good leaders. I see bad leaders. I see candidates that um, are in really toxic situations and they want to get out of it. And I've been there too. And that's a, that's a big reason why I got into recruiting in the first place, because, and a lot of people have heard me say this, but I remember waking up at a, at a job back in the day and just dreading it and like yeah. crying on the way to work. Like that's so, it was a very emotional, like roller coaster time in my life, mm -hmm. but you everybody says like, oh, you, nobody loves their job, but that's crazy. Like you should, you are there a lot. You should love what you do or at least somewhat. And like, yes, things can be stressful, but there's good stress. Like, I don't know, there's bad stress and good stress and, yeah. and it shouldn't be in a toxic, bad stress situation. So 
Yeah, uh, not so great leaders, the ones that are also crying in the corner while they're trying to, to be managers. Like, that's not that's not where I want to be. I don't want to look up to you as I mean, I feel bad, but I don't want to be that person in the corner. Like, I don't want to take your spot. Clearly, it's not a great role to be in sure. um, thing. Like I've been in the restaurant industry where managers throw pots and pans and swear. And like, that's oh, very, oh my God, <laughs> it was it was interesting. Um, but yeah, that that stressed out manager or leader, um, yeah. it really bleeds into your team. So uh, in, in that condescending, demeaning, um, there's been sexual harassment in my life mm -hmm. from leaders before. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are definitely managers and leaders out there that have that title that shouldn't. Oh, yeah, that, you know, so there's the not so great, but the ones that have been amazing in my life, I've also had those. And it's it's awesome to be able to compare and just know um, like you're not taking, taking their leadership for granted. So somebody that can recognize your strengths, um, I've had, I've had leaders in the past that, that pointed out, you know, maybe you don't like this, maybe you should do this. And it was like an aha moment. Um, the ones that encourage and motivate and listen and understand and support and give direction when needed or, or ask you if you need direction. Um, I know, I've learned that as a leader, like asking if you need support or direction. Um, it's so simple, but just asking that. Um, and I still need that from my from from my manager, mm -hmm. or my supervisor. Like they, it's just a just being human and understanding that people have other things going on in life. It's just a job. Um, so mm -hmm. I think those are the good leaders, the ones that can really relate and have that empathy. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think empathy is huge. I also think as um, I mean, managers are always important, but as a manager, having now a really great manager above me is, um, it makes all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, like it lets me, somebody who really cares about me as a person, um, you know, your job, like you said, it's never just a nine to five, every, something will always spill mm -hmm. over. You carry it with you. Same that you do with your personal life. Like if, if it's not going well, it's going to bleed into every part of your life, but mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I like I said before, I've had leaders who um, were chaotic, who were um, uh, emotional, like you've had, um, uh, probably brought a bit too much of their personal life into the workplace, um, uh, just not things that I ever wanted to emulate. Um, but then, you know, even before I was in leadership, I had... Um, peers, I would say, um, people who I worked with who were, you know, 10, 20, 30 years into their career that um, hadn't lost that like empathetic spark that I yeah. I thought, you know, oh, it that's that's possible to hold on to. And so, you know, they're leading their teams. And I, I saw them as an example and thought, that's who I strive to be. Um, that's and, a really good point too, Jamie. Sorry to interrupt you, but just yeah. having having someone on your team that doesn't necessarily have that manager title or part mm -hmm. of the leadership team, like there there's still those people, peers, or people that are brand new that you are learning from yeah. um, on so many different levels that can be leaders. Like you don't have to be a manager to be a leader. Like yeah, that is that is crucial. That's something I've learned. Um, you know, in in the time that I've I've transitioned is that. It, you, you don't have to manage people like that is not what leadership necessarily is yeah um, and you can be a leader without having having those those titles absolutely and I think organizations do best when they have both when they have really impactful people who are in leadership positions but then really strong leaders who aren't responsible and have kind of don't have the you know the the weight of managing people and yep. so they kind of have the capacity to um step in and really advise and mentor in a yeah. and I've seen that I've seen that or I even felt that before as as a, almost a negative like okay yeah. I don't want to manage so I'm obviously not ready for the next step or or I have to manage if I want to move up like that's we we got to stop thinking that way like yeah. there are crucial individual contributors that are amazing at what they do and are still leaders and mentors and coaches and they just don't necessarily like directly manage they just Absolutely. don't hire, fire, do reviews, you know, that yeah. there's, there, there are big, big differences and people should know that it's not a negative if you don't go that path. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, let's say though, that people are still thinking like I leadership, managing people, that's something I want to do. Are there things like that you've seen when you've talked to candidates or hiring managers or even in your own life that you're 
you've identified as like, yeah, that's a sign that you are ready. Yeah. And we kind of touched on this before, you know, when, when you're the person that everyone's coming to, because not only are you well liked and people get along with you and, and they're, you're not intimidating. (laughs) Yeah. It's easy to talk to, but it's, it's the one where, um, it's a sign where it's, it's people are coming to you with the questions and you're answering and you, and mm-hmm. you're helping them and they're so grateful. And it's like, wow, I actually do know what I'm doing. Um, or you find the answer for them. That's another thing. Or like you, you direct them to the people that know the answers. Like you, you're that person that is that liaison and, and can really help them. So yeah, if you, you can feel yourself becoming the expert, you're already the expert. Like that's a really good sign. Um, if you, if you can tell that you're like very decisive and calm under pressure. I think that's another really good sign. Um, I used to not be that way. I'm Mm -hmm. still working on that, but, you know, being able to just really push through chaos and stress and again, not having that bleed onto your team. I think that's another really good sign when you you can be calm and just delegate and get things done. Mm -hmm. Uh, another one that I know both you and I are working on is being able to know when to say the word no. Uh, I have always struggled with that. I always want to take on it more. I will always want to help. I always want my hand in like everything and have control. So of course Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say no, but I've learned that I I can get easily burnt out if you don't say no and you need to just like let somebody else do it and have trust with your team. Um, So that's another one. I think you mentioned a book. Yeah. Yeah. I, like you said, I've been working on this a lot. Um, there's a book that was recommended to me by my manager. Um, it's called essentialism. It just gives you strategies for how to say no to, you know, how to keep it uh, doing the essential, like not just taking on more because somebody asked you, like, that's not, that doesn't warrant you saying yes. And so, um, I have also found that, um, the nice thing is, and I'm still working on this with myself, but when you're managing people and you have to say no on for, on behalf of somebody else, that kind mm-hmm. of works that muscle a little, a little bit more, which is nice. Yeah. Cause you feel better. Yeah. Protective. But yeah. And I think we've mentioned it before, but just, um, I think the biggest thing is just really, um, getting excited and wanting to see other people succeed. Yep. And that is, that's something that the best managers want to do every day. And, um, and if you find yourself doing that, and if you, if that really kind of energizes you, then I would say that's a huge sign that you're ready. And if it doesn't, that's not a bad thing, but maybe individual room, like, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, but yeah, and I would say if people are feeling, you know, leadership, that's something that they want to do today. Um, I would just um, give some advice that, you know, the, the learning curve is a bit steep. It's um, even if it's you're moving into a role leading people who are doing something that you've done. So you're super familiar with, you know, the the work, the product, the projects, all that sort of thing. Um, the people management element throws a whole new curveball in there. So just give yourself grace. That's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and honestly, you're going to be learning your whole life. So just enjoy the process. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And I think also this was an aha moment in my life is just having a backup plan. Maybe it doesn't work right. out. Maybe you don't want to mm-hmm. manage or lead, or you get into it and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? This isn't for me mm-hmm. really, you know, setting that expectation up front with your supervisor or manager, or your, your team saying like, Hey, I'm going to try this, but if it doesn't work out, I want to have that plan B and be able to get back to what I do best and, and be an individual contributor again. Um, so just really having that plan and and setting that expectation up front is really important. Yeah. I love that. What if, what if somebody maybe not today, but maybe in like a year they're feeling that's, you know, leadership's on the horizon there. Sure. Um, I think the, we're in recruiting. So I think networking uh, is a really important key takeaway for that. Uh, just looking out to your network, mm-hmm. identifying the people that you look up to or you want to be in their shoes or or take the path that they took in some way or another, or they're in an industry or a position that you want. Um, reaching out to them and just getting coffee. It's so simple and picking their brain and asking them questions about themselves and how they got there and what they did. And uh, just really 
doing your research, I, I think, and, and just talking to people. Um, people like talking about themselves uh, and love, love helping um, generally. So yeah. I, I would recommend doing that. And then also uh, have that open conversation with, with your manager. Like, do they think you're, you're ready or what do you need to do to get to that next, next step? So it's not maybe immediate, but what are some things that, that they see in the industry or the company that you're in mm -hmm. um, leaders do to get to that next level? Yeah. I love that. I also think um, soft skills are really big. Um, those are really critical for leadership. Things like uh, communication, self-awareness, mm -hmm. mentioned it a lot, but empathy, adaptability, these are all really um, big parts of, of being an effective leader. So um, start to do like a self-audit, like where you feel like you are, uh, um, where your skills fall on each of those areas. Um, kind of bonus for marketing and creative professionals, those are really helpful when you're um, building effective relationships with clients or your audience. So yes. That's pretty nice. And then, like you said, like having the conversation with your manager, I think that there are um, ways to just really start building your case for why you see yourself as a leader um, in your organization. Um, what experience you already bring to the table, things you're already doing that um, are kind of, quote unquote, like leadership responsibilities, um, what value you'd add, um, training that you've already pursued, things like that that I think that's um I think that shows a lot of of um gumption and and it impresses you know a manager regardless of if that's gonna be you know I think also putting together like what how you envision or your vision of what kind of leader you want to be not every leader is the same obviously yep. and like what what does that look like to you and what do you um, feel like where could you contribute in your in your company or your mm -hmm. industry um, and just really outline what it is you want to want to do for the company and what would benefit them. Yep. Yep. I love that. Um, you know, I know we're, we're just over 20 minutes, so I do want to keep this kind of short. So um, uh, we'll probably end with some key takeaways. I know, Kelly, you had a few. Um, yeah, uh, I think finding a mentor is mm -hmm. the biggest piece. Um, my colleague Katie Larson and I just finished uh, Team Women, if, if everyone's familiar with them. Um, it's a great program, but they have a mentorship program that we did. Um, and it's just a great way to meet new people, go to lunch, like different yeah. perspectives, different industries. But um, them specifically, um, again, since it's International Women's Day, it's like mo mostly women, of course, mm -hmm. um, but just seeing other powerful women in in the type of role that you want to be in and and learning from them, just going back to that networking piece that I said, um, mm -hmm. it's a great way to to make yourself feel better about like what you're going through and it's normal. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, uh, I think identifying the people in your life that maybe already are mentors. Mm -hmm. you, it, they might not be officially there, but just yeah. realizing like, hey, I do have this support system, mm -hmm. um, whether it's friends, family, other people in your your company or, or circle. Yeah. Um, so those are some really big ones for me. Yeah, I think that's huge. And and I've I've mentioned a few, but I, I am a big reader. So I love um, any sort of books on management or leadership. Um, a few of my favorites, uh, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, that's a really great one. Um, it kind of delves into being vulnerable and building trust with your team, which is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, another one is Conversational Capacity. Um, I think the author is Craig Weber. So that's just about um, having really constructive, tough dialogue. Um, there's a lot of um, difficult conversations and situations that you need to deal with as a leader and and um just having like the skill set and the um you know the the drive to do that i think that that's a skill that you're constantly um developing and so those are i've loved those both mm -hmm. yeah and then like i said like training like there's really great free resources local events groups team women others here in in minnesota but out, outside of um, the state for sure. LinkedIn does great ones. Um, there's um, organizations like DISC, DISC assessments. We do that here. I think th that was really helpful. I, I loved seeing um, and being able to like put a name to all of the um, like workplace tendencies that I had and really own those and, and feel proud of that. That was really 
um, great. And you um, and I realizing that both of us are part of the leadership team and we are exact opposites, but that's why we work so well together. 100%. I know. I know. And it's great to just like be able to name that. Um, we've also done Ken, Ken um, Blanchard. Uh, I think it's situational and self-leadership. Those are great. Mm -hmm. Um and actually, Solarity is doing, um, we are holding a leadership series. We just ended, or we're in the middle of our first cohort. The first um, session went amazingly well. Yeah, it's so exciting. I've, I've got to sit in on them and and um, and I've learned, I've sat through these sessions before, but I swear I, I learned something new every every time. So that's been great. But, um, you know, we're accepting applicants for future cohorts too. We're going to hold a few more this year. So um, we'll put a link in the comments if anyone wants to go check out the series um learn more and apply but yeah yeah another thing with that series too it's it's not just brand new leaders or people that want to be a leader like there was i know that i invited and and somebody attended that had been at 3m for 25 plus years and mm -hmm. he of course had a lot to contribute but then also he he met a ton of different people great networking and he learned a lot about himself he had never done desk before so yep. pretty cool to to see people do that yeah um we do have one question. Uh, so Sarah actually asked, how do I prove in an interview with a new company that I'm ready to move into or onto a leadership role if I've never had that title before? Um, I feel like job descriptions are so defined. Really good question. Um, and it's somewhat difficult to answer, but not really. I mean, if you're already mentoring and leading indirectly and you just don't have that title um, or those those actual like responsibilities on your resume, you can still talk about them, um, point them out, like, and literally say indirectly, I've, I've mentored or coached or trained like that, that is yep. leadership. Um, also, you know, if, if you're part of special projects with your actual leadership team, or if you've done things for them, or they come to you for advice on, on strategy or planning, and there's lots of different ways that you can set that up and be prepared yeah. to um, go into an interview to prove that you are ready. I think absolutely. I I don't think anybody needs to be confined or defined by a title. Like leaders are often leading for years before they get that title. So just talk yourself up. Don't be afraid to pat yourself on the back and talk about you know the things that you've done. Um, that's what they want to hear. So yep. yeah, absolutely. love that. Thanks for the and, question, Sarah. <laughs> and it's okay, I think, to uh, to to let them know, hey, I want to learn your this role. I want to learn the mm -hmm. company and the industry. But I also have my eye on being a leader and I, I've done this X, Y, Z in my career in the past mm -hmm. and I've, I've gotten really far. And so I expect that. I know that I might not be able to do that immediately for a new company, yeah. but that is that is a goal of mine. And I want to make sure that you are understanding that. Yeah. Um, I love that. I love it. Yeah. And if anyone has any more questions, I mean, feel free to um comment we this will go on to our linkedin page and we'll make sure to follow up with anyone in the comments reach out to kelly and i on linkedin or via email we'll pop up our emails on the screen but um thanks so much kelly for agreeing to do this with me <laughs> absolutely thank you I, I i love talking about myself and others and i know with you. <laughs> i love it i love it well everybody have a wonderful wednesday happy international women's day again and yep. um thanks for joining us bye See ya.